on this episode of Still Loading, we get all sorts of British. Hey guys, it's Josh, and welcome back to this new episode of Still Loading. For this week's episode, we are getting, well, like you heard in the intro, a little bit of British, but what I mean by that, I mean Lord British, as in the designer of the Ultima games. That's right, this week's episode is on the only NES installment, I think the only NES installment of Ultima. You know, I didn't do any research on that. I should probably look that up. But we're doing, uh, doing, uh, excuse me, this episode is going to be on Ultima Exodus for the NES. This was the port of Ultima 3 from the originally released on, you know, various PCs and whatnot back in the 80s. And this was the NES port of it. So I played this game and I couldn't really get into it. But what I will say is that it was very, very ambitious for what the game was trying to be, especially on an NES. I can see why it is meant for a PC, but it was a very admirable attempt to port it over to the NES. So I was pretty I was pretty impressed by what they did to make it work within the within the confines of the NES. In any case, so for those who don't know, the Ultima series is one of the legendary RPG, like uh, Western RPG series, just period, ever released. It was developed by an American slash English uh, game designer named Lord British, whose real name is Richard Garriott. Uh, he created the Ultima games back in the early 80s, and it's kind of, I mean, they're famous for being some of the most popular RPGs of all time. Now, I I personally have not played a whole lot of them, uh, but I am fascinated by the idea of them. This one, I mean, the problem with these old RPGs, and I mean this in an objective way, not in like a subjective way that I have an issue with, but objectively, they're meant to be very long grinding games. In fact, when I looked up long plays of these, they only had speed runs, and the speed runs were still two hours long, which is very, very impressive for an old game. But generally, you know, Old RPGs on the PC were meant to bash your head into a wall a thousand times until you learned how to break the wall with your head. And that's literally it. So it was a tough, tough game to really try out. And the first thing I want to comment on is the combat. Because So actually, sorry, let's start with the story. Actually, you know what? Sorry again. Still true, still loading style. I have to start with the box art. (laughs) Hadoi. So the box art for this is actually kind of cool looking. You got a picture like it's not the best. The idea was there, but in terms of execution, wasn't 100 percent great, but I still enjoy it. Um, You see these two monsters in the in the backdrop dropping in on your heroes who looks like a a dark wizard, a knight or paladin, if you will, and a priestess, maybe. And in the background, you see this a foreboding castle and there's the moon in the sky even though it's kind of daylight towards the bottom it's all over the place but it's got a it, overall the box art looks pretty impressive and so the back of the box says this is the ultimate role-playing fantasy game you put together a team of any four characters assume their identities and powers to conquer the evil exodus who has created havoc in britannia hostile forces high mountains and dangerous oceans st- All stand in your way as you destroy monsters, search for gold, find clues, and explore dungeons to discover the hiding place of Exodus. So, the whole... Wow, they even advertise on the back 100 hours of game time. So the fact that someone beat this game in 2-4 to hours is fucking nuts. Uh, Yeah, so that is pretty much all it says on the back, and that's the box. The box has a cool purple outline to the image I poorly described um it's kind of got like i said the image kind of has like this wing demon bat thing flying it's about to swoop in on our heroes and uh it's got this weird like almost like a Ar- cyclops armadillo monster on the left side also about to pounce not flying but about a pounce on the heroes print or the princess or uh may- probably a priestess because uh, she has like a staff with like a like a cross on the top of it. She's wearing, uh, she's wearing this pink outfit. Paladin's wearing armor, sword, shield, and the black and the like. The dark wizard is wearing black robes and a wizard hat with a 
giant oh it's a walking staff but it looks like a club because the the top of the thing's fucking huge so it's it's just weird looking in any case so let's move on like i said uh this let's talk about the story just a little bit now i the since the game is so long i couldn't really afford to play through this whole thing uh like i've said many times before but what I will say is the storyline from what I read online is super simple. You are hired by Lord British, who is like the king of, a la- of the land, to defeat Exodus, who's terrorizing the land. Simple enough. Now, what I did read on Wikipedia, at least, is that the Exodus could be a robot. You have to get four punch cards t- and like old computer punch cards before computers were actually digital and they were physically binary, which is with you know punches punch cards meaning you know ones and zeros i don't know exactly how it worked but uh you know it's fucking nuts when you think about old computers were literally like there's analog computers but your let your head sink into that there's analog computers in a weird way i mean still programmed in binary technically because ones and zeros but it was all communicated through punch cards any case uh so you have to get four punch cards to defeat exodus and that kills him and instead of combat it doesn't matter how strong your party is uh to defeat exodus you have to uh you know solve puzzles and part of the puzzles are those punch cards they have to be entered in a specific order which if you play the game and go through it you can figure out that puzzle I have not played the game and gone through it, so I don't know how to defeat the, beat the puzzle. But like I, like it says on the back of the box, it's 100 hours. And after playing the combat, I don't know how the fuck you're even supposed to beat the game. So the combat's super interesting, right? The way it works is that uh, there's no random encounters. You see enemies on the world map. So I would assume you just kind of have to explore around the world and find these punch cards until you uh, ultimately find Exodus. But for those who have played this, please write in and let me know because the online really did not explain it very well. And I'm curious because I'll explain it a little bit towards the end. But Ultima 4 sounds like one of the most interesting games ever. Uh, But like I said, I'll talk about that at the end. Let's talk about let's focus on this, the combat. And so the way it works is that you will uh, any part of like your, your party is following. You can pick four random adventures and it feels like the game like if you can create your own uh which i did not try i tried just preset ones and the preset ones do not let you choose what class types are in your party it's either so for example the one that i played i was stuck with two wizards a thief and an alchemist you can't change the class maybe and i didn't try this maybe if i tried hitting select i tried hitting a couple things and it really didn't work uh, I'll go back to tinker with it. Maybe I should have also read the manual, but you know that's not still learning style, my friends. I go in blind and hope for the best. Uh, so in any case, you you get your party together, and then you go. Uh, they trail behind the main. You know they're following one person, and then they trail behind them on the world map. If any one of the four, so you can see all four on the world map, and if any one of them touches an enemy uh like a little monster icon that's moving around the world map you will go into a battle which ultimately is not just one monster it's usually a group and the battles are really interesting so you it what's a little obnoxious is that as soon as you input a command your turn's over whether you accidentally inputted that command or not and i don't mean like all right, let's move and end turn. I mean, as soon as you move, your turn's over. You can either move or you can attack. You cannot do both. Additionally, if you attack in the wrong direction or you try to use, like, for example, uh, I accidentally, I wasn't paying attention and my, I tried to use magic with my thief. That was his turn. It just said, you can't, you can't use magic. You don't know any spells. And then it was the next monsters or uh, one of my other characters turns. Kind of dumb, but it's it really makes you think out your strategy like how it how you need to play so you it, i feel like this would be a really good game once you got used to the mechanics of combat but like i said i only really play these for 20 30 minutes just to get an idea of it and one like i said again in the beginning of the episode i was actually very impressed with how well they ported it over i mean i didn't play the original one but i'm still very impressed with it so you can either move or attack. And the wizards were by far the most OP, but you ran out of magic very fast. And what's interesting is that when you select the attack option, you have to say, 
then it, it then asks which direction do you want to attack in and you just use the d-pad whichever direction you tap that's your move so if you accidentally hit the wrong direction you're fucked man i'm sorry it just that's that's it it's really it's it's very unforgiving in that aspect where you as soon as you make a mistake like the wrong move you're fucking done like it's over uh so the gameplay really it it was really cool but like it's just so freaking unforgiving like i just can't get it out of my head like it's really really unfair the way they make you play this game and but at the same time once you understand it's very easy to pick up what the rules are it's not like you're going to keep guessing you have once you understand the the way combat works you have no one to blame but yourself which i do like i hate games that set the rules and then change them halfway through this is very clear and concise uh despite being kind of dumb but they're it's clear and concise and so i mean you can do a lot of different things with it i didn't your guys can take a good number of hits so it's not like like two hits and you're dead so it is pretty fair with that i don't i couldn't figure out how to heal my guys the men there's so many options on the menu outside of battle um I, I'll really need to sit down and really watch a long play of this. But like I said, it's two hours and I just don't want to spend two hours of my life watching someone play an RPG, like an old school RPG that I probably will never touch. For those who do like Ultima though, seriously, let me, what is the appeal of it? Like what got you hooked in it? I don't mean that sarcastically or in some kind of rude judgmental way. I honestly want to know it's, um, it it's just it's above me i'll be honest it's it's above me in terms of my skill level it just i can't i don't have the attention span for it anymore nor do i have the time unfortunately but it's i i respect the ultimate games for what they really try to do like lord british or richard garriott really reinvented like the western rpg and it's really freaking cool um so little bits about what at least what um uh wikipedia says about the gameplay uh, Exodus featured revolutionary graphics for its time as one of the first computer RPGs to display character or animated characters. That's kind of interesting, actually. Also, Exodus differs from previous games that players now direct the actions of the party of four characters rather than just one. And that's held up through the NES version. You control all four of them in battle. Uh, and each of them have different strengths and weaknesses, obviously. I really would have liked to if i had more time to tinker with it and try out something other than just two wizards a thief and an alchemist what a weak fucking group i didn't have anyone because the problem is is that wizards uh, here's the other issue sorry with when you attack range you can only attack in a straight direction so if you see an enemy diagonally from you it's not like you can say hey i want to attack range and target an enemy you know whatever you get the four cardinal directions that's it north south east west and so if they're not in that spot, you can't hit them. You have to move to get into a position to hit them that way, which is kind of cool because it adds more strategy. But at the same time, if it's down to the last bit and you're you all you have, like if it's down to the wire and you surround the last enemy, unless if they're trapped on one side, the wizard's not going to be able to hit them or the enemy's going to rush, run out and hit the wizard. I don't know. I just, I just really the combat was just so difficult. I just, I couldn't get over it. Uh, so let's see what else it says. Um, during regular play, the character, Oh wait, no, sorry. During regular play, the characters are represented in a single player icon and move as one. However, the bat in, in, in battle mode, each character is represented separately on a tactical battle screen. And the player who alter and the player alternates commands between each character in order, followed by each enemy character having a turn. Uh, e oh, sorry, it's I'm reading like out of the corner of my freaking eye. I should just move this. Uh, it's the benefit of having two monitors. <laughs> I really should have done that. Um, this differs from the two previous games in the Ultima series, where the player is simply depicted as trading blows with one opponent on the main map until the other is defeated. Enemies on the overworld map can be seen and at least temporarily avoided, while enemies in dungeons appear randomly without any forewarning. There we go. So I that would have been if I made it to a dungeon, I would have known that. 
The party of four that a player uses can be chosen at the beginning of the game. There is a choice between 11 different classes. Fighter, Paladin, Cleric, Wizard, Ranger, Thief, Barbarian, Lark, don't know what that is, Illusionist, Druid, and Alchemist. The player also chooses among five races, Human, Elf, Dwarf, Bobbit, or Fuzzy. What the fuck is a Fuzzy? All, both my wizards were fuzzies. It said it on there. I don't know what the fuck that means. So what the fuck's a fuzzy? Does it even tell me on here? Maybe I should do research outside of fucking Wikipedia, right? <laughs> but uh, you know, this is the high quality entertainment you guys are totally not paying for. Um, <laughs> but all right, I'm not going to bore you with reading Wikipedia. If you guys really want to, you can go do it yourself. But uh, to kind of wrap this up, overall, the game was fine. It's not my cup of tea, but I can really understand why people like it. Uh, it's really inventive with how it used. Like, it, it's completely different than Final Fantasy on the NES. Like, And I feel, uh, hopefully, it like got people into the Ultima series like that weren't that didn't have a PC and couldn't play it originally. Because it's, it's such a unique take at the time on an RPG because, you know, at least from what people were used to on the NES, people were used to either Dragon Warrior slash dra really known as Dragon Quest or, the, excuse me, oh my goodness, excuse me, or, <laughs> good thing I didn't burp into the mic, um, or they're used to from the Final Fantasy series, which is kind of a Dragon Quest-esque clone, but, you know, a, a little bit better, uh, like the original Dragon Quest clone, I should say. But, uh, so Ultima was, at least this one is, really interesting because you're not controlling like you, like i said you're not controlling just one character and like wikipedia said not one character and you can control all four of them independently in battle and i guess you could kind of do that in the original final fantasy but it was you know very turn-based this is actually you know placement based too like you 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 see a top-down version and you have to move the characters around on the screen so it's a really interesting dynamic i've never really quite played a game like this on the nes before and that's a good thing. It was a really it was a really eye-opening experience for me. So, overall, I give it a thumbs up. Not my favorite, but I can but objectively I can see why this is actually a pretty decent game. Just not my cup of tea. And now what I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit was Ultima 4. So, I'm going to have to unfortunately go back to uh Wikipedia for this one for this reason only. So, Ultima Ultima 4 was interesting because at the time, and I'm not reading off of Wikipedia for this, but uh, at the time, you know, there was a lot of uh, parents worried about violence and video games and stuff like that. And Ultima 3, the whole point of it was just fighting and killing animals, and that's how you would win. So Rich, uh, Richard Garriott kind of wanted to go kind of reverse, you know, you know, switch directions, reverse streams, and just try to figure do something a little bit different and it it was as wikipedia says it shifted the series from the hack and slash dungeon crawl gameplay of of its predecessors to a more ethically nuanced story driven approach so what's really cool about ultima and the whole ethically nuanced thing once again from wikipedia not going to try to steal whoever that author's shit was uh, but what was really interesting about Ultima is that it was less about the Ultima Force, excuse me, is that it was less about the combat and more about your virtues. And the virtues are just uh, uh, there's eight virtues in the game and their the relationship to the three principles of truth, love and courage. And the gameplay was designed pretty much around your relationships with the NPC characters. So it was like a really primitive, but at the same time, primitive just due to the technological constraints. But in terms of design and scope, it was a really advanced uh, morality system, which nowadays it's very it's boiled down to, you know, are you good or you're bad? And you have a morality meter like that fable pretty much started and, you know, Mass Effect did and a bunch of other and, you know, Knights of the Old Republic and all this other stuff. And it's but it's based around these eight different virtues. So instead of just good and bad, there's actually eight different things that you have to take care of, like, you know, deal with. And by how you interact in the game, you act, it determines how the NPCs are going to interact with you. So, so let's see, cause the reason I'm not describing this directly, cause of one, I haven't played it. And two, I generally tend to ramble. Like right now I'm kind of tangenting, just trying to explain all this. So, 
Uh, according to Wikipedia, instead of simply choosing stats to assign points to, as in the first three Ultimate Games, players are asked various ethical de- dilemmas by a gypsy fortune teller using a remote using remotely remotely tarot like cards of eight values these situations do not have one correct resolution rather players must rank the eight virtues and whichever stands as their highest priority determines the type of character determines the type of character they will play for example choosing compassion creates a bard honor a paladin sacrifice a tinker i don't know what the fuck that is uh, so on and so forth so you're so when you create your character you okay that's cool so instead of choosing the stats like you do a character creation for all the others like you could do in this one which i did the pre-made characters uh instead of making my own but you would choose your virtues and that's really fucking fascinating you know like that it's a completely different thing now i want to do a whole nother episode on ultima 4 i don't know i mean you know what let me see what wikipedia says was it ported to anything uh, I was ported to the NES, so I was wrong. There was more than one Ultima game for the NES. I should have known. Uh, I'm definitely going to look this up and see, like, you know, maybe the port's not the greatest, but I'm going to try to get my hands on it and really give it a shot because the idea that this that this Ultima is based more around your morality than it is about uh, fighting is fascinating to me, especially for a game, you know, when this game came out. So Ultima... Uh, Exodus or three originally was released in 1983. Ultima four, uh, the quest of the avatar was released in 1985. So think of that 1985 game with a fucking morality system that like that kind of shit blows my mind. Like this is why whenever you hear me do like video game history things, when I talk about the history of a game, like I did with Tetris the other week or something like that, that's why I like talking about it. Cause when I go back and I see games that were way ahead of their time in terms of design aspects and they had to make that design work within the limitations of their of their you know processing power, that type of shit blows me away. I and I remember and I know this is a tangent once again, you know, I apologize to Mr. Casador Jones over at Two Guys in the Game, the king of tangents, but I'm stealing a little bit of a taking a little bit of a cue from him. Uh but I love video game history. And I remember the first time that it really like sunk into sunk in that I love it is when I looked at Simon's quest in Castlevania. Now, you know, listening back, I'm not really a big fan of the episode I did on that. I might redo it at some point, but the fact that that, that game had a freaking day and night system just blows my mind. I honestly cannot believe that they pulled shit off like that. Like that's an old game. That's a night like what? 87, 88. That game came out. I'd have to look it up to be certain but that's insane like how do that i don't know just that's such a forward thinking idea that you didn't really see like because when you think of old nes games you think of Mega Man and mario and yeah castlevania but while castlevania 2 is kind of like the you know the black sheep of the of the original trilogy it did some really inventive thing or innovative excuse me innovative things and the same goes for, you know, the these Ultima games, just to kind of bring it back to our original topic. So um, I want to do a full episode on Ultima 4 and really kind of break down how the gameplay actually works, because I just described, you know, what it focuses on. I don't really know anything about the gameplay, but for those who have not at least heard of it or tried it out, go give it a look. Uh, like, go look it up. It's such an interesting idea, and it's such an interesting concept that I really, I think it deserves like a full, I want to find a guest who's like really into it and talk about it. If not, then you're going to have to listen to my uh, boring ass voice some more, (laughs) but, um, all right. So that pretty much wraps everything up. Uh, I just want to give a couple quick shout outs as per usual. First and foremost, I forgot to give him a shout out last week, but I want to give a huge shout out to my uh, friend Vince. He helped me get new mic equipment for the podcast. So last episode and this episode was recorded on some, on a new mic, and it's and I actually have a mixer now and I have a second mic, so it'll be much easier for guests. So you'll get a little bit clearer sound quality coming out of them than what you have been hearing, because especially on the Super Mario World episode, it was five of us huddled around a USB mic and the sound quality wasn't great. This I can really thoroughly check the sound level. So it's going to really work out. Hopefully I do a good job with it. I don't know. I'm fucking lazy with all this shit, but you know, so once again, huge shout out to Vince. It was awesome for him to come over, hang out and help me out with this. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, let me see. Actually, I don't know if he wants me to give out his, uh, 
any of his social media stuff. If you do, Vince, let me know. I will put it in the next episode. I promise. Um, some other friends, uh, friends of the show, uh, shout out to two guys in a game, Hotter and Kaz. I referenced them a little bit before. That's an awesome podcast. They've been great friends. They've been huge supporters of the show. Uh, I just listened to their most recent episode uh, that they released this last Tuesday, and they're talking about a new segment, Kaz's Indie Game of the Month. And it was a really good segment. I, I'm very curious as to what it, the game is. It's called Oxen Free, and it was like this weird horror indie adventure, like a psychological thing. I'm definitely interested in checking that out. Also, the Hotter Show, uh, Hotter from Two Guys in Games. That's his personal podcast that he does. Lots of music reviews and just interviews. It's a really, it's a really fun show. Definitely give it a listen. Uh, my original podcasting partner in crime, Erica from the Apex and the Abyss. Go give her a listen. It's a true crime podcast, and it's honestly one of the best out there. Uh, super great show. Great content, as always, from her. Uh, no Geeks Allowed is another great show. That's K-N-O-W, No Geeks Allowed. Uh, I'm actually hoping to do an episode with them relatively soon. So go give them a listen. They're really funny. Uh, they just recently did an episode on James Bond and 007. Hands down, I mean, I probably said it before, I fucking love James Bond movies, so that episode made me so happy. Also, shout out to Drinks with the Drinks with Larry crew. Great podcast, bunch of comedians. They're fucking funny as hell. I'm still way behind on their episodes, but I'm, you know, finally in the 20s range, and they're up to their 40s, so I'm, I'm basically about halfway through what they currently have. Go give them a listen, though. I really enjoy their stuff. And finally, uh, the Christian Christian and Damon's Amazing Nerd Show. Really good podcast. I talk about movies, horror movies, wrestling. Really great show. Please go give them a listen. And I think that should be it. So thank you once again for listening, and I will see you all next time.